Hello there. This is Being God's Obedient Sermon Channel. And today's lesson, we're in Job doing chapters 4 through 7. Uh, if you remember from last uh, Bible reading, Job had lost everything. And the only thing he had left was his home and his wife. And his uh, health had been attacked. You know, his skin was attacked. Because God, God allowed Satan to touch his life to take from him. And then allowed Satan to touch his body but couldn't take his life. And so and Job was all upset and going through depression as we clearly read and so he had this uh, he was talking to us you know discussing to his friends he had three friends show up and he was talking you know very, very kind of depressed to his friends and in this we're going to have one of his friends is going to be speaking to him and he's going to answer but yeah that's what we're studying tonight but yeah, if you're new to this, this is a Bible study channel where I read through, I read the Bible. I go through the Bible book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. I don't skip anything. It's a commandment from God that we are to read all of the well. It's it's commanded that preachers are to teach all of the Word. Now I'm not a preacher, but I am doing a Bible study channel, so if, you know. If you're to teach all of the word, you're also commanded to learn all of the word. You know, you should read all of it. You shouldn't skip anything. You know, even if it sounds boring, we're to learn it and study the Bible because there's there's messages throughout the Bible in every aspect. And the one thing I like to do with my channel, with with my Bible study, you know, that I'm doing is I like to explain to people what the Bible means, what parts pertain to us today, which parts don't. Because there is, uh, I'm going to say probably millions of people all across America that believe the Old Testament is irrelevant, and that's not so. And Jesus said he came to finish the law, and a lot of people are under this belief that all of the Old Testament is the law and the law is only a part of the Old Testament. And there's five parts that don't stand today. You have the circumcision for men, you have the dietary laws, you have the sacrifices to cover sin, you know, to cover sins and being stoned to death for sinning. And the last part is the Sabbath has been changed because in Old Testament times you only had to have one day holy and now under New Testament, under Christ, every day is holy. So your day of rest is whenever you want it to be. And so those are the five parts that are the law that no longer stand. The rest of the Bible the rules for the woman, the rules for the man, the rules for society, all that's in Old Testament, and all that stuff stands today. Now, of course, the part, um, well, it's like it's a prime example. In Old Testament, God says, if you want to live in peace, you must be with like-minded. You must keep the wicked out of your society. And in a sense, it says if they won't leave, you stone them with stones until they're dead. We still do that today. It's called the death penalty for those wicked enough to, you know, to be executed for their crimes against humanity. And so, you know, these rules, you know, it's to, to, stay in, to, to live in peace, you must cast out the wicked. And, but this was back during a time when cities had walls around them and everybody had to come through a main gate. And we don't have that no more. And so, 
But of course today we have crime running the streets instead of law-abiding, you know, enforcers and citizens. But that is by Satan's design. He wants it that way. And most people in these areas, they follow Satan. They don't follow God. It's very clear, you know, just in how they live and what they do. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right on in here to study because I can be on that other stuff for hours. And as I said, this is primarily a Bible study channel. But I do like to talk about different parts of things. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there's no fix in America or any other society in the world until the, those societies turn back to God. And God even says it in his word. You know, because curses, curses are for societies and countries and civilizations that diso disobey God and do things in perverse ways. There's curses for that. And God says, if you, if you want to um, uh, to, to, to end the hard times, you get, you know, you get, I uh, can't remember exactly the word for that right now. But it goes, and the primary thing is, you know, if you want to, uh, for those who have turned away from God, you turn back to God, confess your sins, turn from your wicked ways, and he will heal your lands. That's a promise from God. He'll end the curses and everything else, the bad that's happening. Oh, but first, you must turn from your wicked ways turn back to God, call upon him, and he will heal your lands. No, that, that promise is still in effect. So, anyway, let's go ahead and jump around in here. We got four chapters to read, but of course, they're not very big chapters. And so it shouldn't take too long to read. I'll go ahead and read through and discuss more at the end. So let's go ahead and start here. Let's start here, chapter four, verse one. Now, of course, this is the friend. Well, it's, you know, this is his friend that's talking to him right now because he was speaking. I said the last part. You know, he was speaking about all depressed and stuff, and you know, and he didn't know what to make of everything that was happening to him, and it was saddening him quite a bit, which it would do anybody. I don't know of anybody that would lose all their kids and all their livestock, their livelihood, and, you know, their, well, of course, they have servants and stuff or whatever. You know, they, they pretty much lost everything. And then all of a sudden he started getting sick, boils and stuff on his skin. So he was, you know, not only lost everything, but now his health is diminished and he was in, uh, hanging out in ashes because it would help soothe the, um, like the, the runny stuff and the oozing from the pusses and stuff, as he scraped, uh, he scraped uh, the boils with a piece of pottery to you know. To try to help, but yeah. Anyways, so chapter four, verse one. Then uh, Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said. If we essay to commune with thee, wilt thou be grieved? But who can withhold himself from speaking? Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholding him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. But now it has come upon thee, and thou faintest, it toucheth thee, and thou art troubled. Is not this thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished, being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? So, quick, quick little thing here. Um, his friends think that he has sinned, and he's being punished by God for sinning. And so that this is kind of like what the discussion's going on. So, uh, verse eight. 
Even as I have seen, they, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. By the blast of God they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. The roaring of the lion and the voice of the fierce lion and the teeth of the young lions are broken. The old lion perished for lack of prey, and the stout lion's whelps are scattered abroad. Now a thing was secretly brought to me, and my, mine ear received a little thereof. Now, of course, um, just a quick other little thing. In Old Testament times, if you had a hard life with this, that, and the other, um, it was presumed that you have sinned and caused your own problems, which wasn't always the case. But that was the normal thought behind everything because if you were very righteous and you did things, you know, very godly, God blessed you. Well, see, in New Testament times, it's the exact opposite. If you're a very godly person, you normally have a harder life. And people that are blessed a lot normally are blessed by Satan because they're following the world and not following God. But not always. But a lot of the times it is. So... Um, anyway, let's continue on here. Yeah, because the New Testament times, uh, when, Je well, when Jesus was coming in, they had a lot of, you know, they asked about that same question about, you know, the blind or the dumb or the people that were crippled, stuff like that. They asked, you know, people born that way, because of who sinned, the person or the parents? And Jesus would explain to them, it's like, you know, just because somebody is having a hard life doesn't mean that anyone has sinned. Because a lot of times people that are in these situations, God uses them as a test to see what the people around them are going to do for them. Are they going to be godly people or wicked people? You know, people that care, people that don't care, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, so it's, a, it's just, you know, it happens. And it's not for anybody sinning, it's just... Some people have a blessed life and some people don't. We've got to remember the commandment from God as well. Actually, from I think, I think it's a New Testament, the commandment part, where it talks about if you've been blessed, you're to help those who haven't been blessed. That's a commandment. So some people, they are righteous and they have been blessed. But a lot of times they fail to help those who haven't been blessed. So that's when, in, you know, they're actually in a sinful situation because they're disobeying God. Anyways, as I said, I can be on some of this stuff for hours, so let's, let's, let's stay the course, as I like to say. Verse 13. And thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me in trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed before my face, the hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. How much less in them that dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the mouth, uh, before the moth. They are destroyed f uh, from morning to evening; they perish forever without any regarding it. Doth not their excellency, which is in them, go away? They die even without wisdom. Chapter 5. Call now if there be any that will answer thee, and to which of the saints wilt thou turn? For wrath killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. I have seen the foolish taking root, but suddenly I cursed his habitation. His children are far from safety, and they are crushed in the gate neither is there any to deliver them. 
whose har- whose harvest the hungry eaten eaten eateth up. That is my sorry, my dyslexia is kicking in now. <laughs> and taketh it even out of the thorns, and the robber swalloweth up their substance. Although affliction cometh not forth of the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground. Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause, which doeth great things and unsearchable marvelous things without number, who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth waters upon the fields, to set up the high set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. He disappointeth the devices of the crafty, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime, and grope in the noonday as in the night. But he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. So the poor hath hope, and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth, therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. So the poor hath hope, and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. I'm sorry. I I'm, I'm, had a quick pause there. It's like <laughs> I thought I left off at 15 there. Anyway, let's continue. Finish, finish uh, restarting 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the uh, scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee. With thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation, and shalt not sin. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great and thy offspring as the grass of the earth. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like as a shock of corn cometh in his season. I'm sorry. It's kind of confusing how to get the two ends in there. Like as a shock of corn cometh in in his season. Lo this, we have searcheth it, so it is, hear it, and know thou and, and, and know thou it for thy good. I said this is a roundabout way of you know his friend saying that you know he's clearly done something wrong, and if he didn't do anything wrong that God would be blessing him instead of cursing him. But there's many times like you know they tend to forget the teachings about, you know, King David, how King David was chased by King Solomon. Well, he wasn't King David yet. He was the son-in-law of King Solomon. But seeing King Solomon was jealous of his son-in-law, which was, you know, wasn't really supposed to be the next king. But since King Solomon, uh, not Solomon, Saul, I'm sorry, King Saul, I said Solomon, King Saul was the first king, King David was the second king. But King Saul was jealous of his son-in-law and chased him, was trying to kill him and everything else. And King 
And David at the time, before he was king, he had to live in caves, live in the fields. You know, his wife was taken from him and given to someone else. Uh, many things happened to him and stuff. But he was a man after God's own heart. He defeated Goliath, you know, stuff like that. So they tend to forget these other lessons because everybody wants to believe that if they live a righteous life, then they're going to be nothing but blessed by God, and that is not so. Because a lot of times we have what the saying goes, iron sharpens iron. Sometimes we are brought to a hard life to make us a stronger person. And I don't like dealing with this, but I have the same thing happening to me and makes my life miserable. So I get all upset and depressed and stuff too, because I'm still a human being and it affects all of us kind of the same way. But yeah, anyways, so now we're going to get here from Job on this. So let's continue on chapter six. But Job answered and said, Oh, that my grief were thoroughly weighed and my calamity laid in the balances together. For now it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. Therefore my words are swallowed up. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me, the poison whereof drinketh up my spirit. The terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. Doth the wild ass bray when he hath grass? Or loweth the ox over his fodder? Can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? The things that my soul refused to touch are as my sorrowful meat. Oh, that I might have my request and that God would grant me the thing that I long for. Even that it would please God to destroy me, that he would let loose his hand and cut me off. Then should I yet have comfort, yea, I would harden myself in sorrow. Let him not spare, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should hope? And what is mine end? that I should prolong my life? Is my strength the strength of stones, or is my flesh of brass? Is not my help in me, and is wisdom driven quite from me? To him that is afflicted, pity should be showed from his friend, but he forsaketh the fear of the Almighty. Now, if that part's not a little clear there, you know, he's hoping to have some pity from his friend, but his friend's pretty much attacking him, you know, worried about, you know, what God might do to him if he doesn't, you know, call his friend a sinner. Pretty much trying to say, you know, instead of pitying his friend, he's telling his friend it's his fault. You know, Job's friends are not nice to him in, in these situations here. And that's the way life is for a lot of people. You know, when everything's going good, people love you and everything else, blah, blah, blah. But when you start having a hard time and you might be depressed from it and everything else, you'll soon find out that those people that call themselves your friends, they don't want to be around you. It's like, oh, you're negative. Oh, you're, you you got negative energy, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. It's like, hey, you know, whenever it's like, I would like some help being lifted up instead of being torn down more. You know, that's happened to me big time. You know, as I said before, you know, I've lost my ability to work and stuff. And I went through, I'm still kind of in depression about it a little bit and stuff because everything in my life got turned upside down. And it's still kind of there. And it's like everybody that called themselves my friend and stuff. Now they don't want to hang around me because I'm not that happy, happy, joy, joy person no more because I've lost pretty much everything. And it changes you. I don't care who you are. It's going to change you when you lose everything. Now, of course, I didn't. I've lost my wife, not not by death or anything, but that you know she left me. But I never got to have any kids, so that didn't lose that. And I never had no servants. But you know, 
I lost pretty much everything else and had to start over multiple times even. It gets old after a while. But we are to keep trying. That's what a man is going to do. But yeah, we would like for our friends to be by our side if they're truly our friends and help us sometimes, you know, just sometimes be there. When people's, when somebody's depressed, they're not asking for much. They're just asking for an ear and some company most of the time because they, they, they got some crap they're working through. That's just the way it is. Some garbage, whatever else, you know. That's what life throws at you. And we we got to work through it. And sometimes we'd like some help or just some company to let us know it's going to be okay. But, yeah. So I can truly understand what Job's going through on this when it talks about and goes, really, you're saying this stuff to me? You know, you're, you're fearing God and stuff like that when, you know, you, you should be, be my friend and be by my side. Anyways, verse, five, verse 15. My brethren have dealt deceitfully as a brook, and as the stream of brooks they pass away, which are blackish by reason of the ice and wherein the snow is hid. What time they wax warm, they vanish. When it is hot, they are consumed out of their place. The paths of their way are turned aside. They go to nothing and perish. The troops of Tema looked and companies of Sheba waited for them. They are confounded because they had hoped. They had thither and were ashamed. For now ye are nothing. Ye see my casting down and are afraid. Did I say, bring unto me, or give a reward for me of your substance, or deliver me from the enemy's hand, or redeem me from the hand of the, of the mighty? Teach me, and I will hold my tongue, and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. How forcible are right words, but what doth your arguing reprove? Do ye imagine to reprove words and the speeches of one that is desperate, which are as wind? Yea, ye overwhelm the fatherless, and ye dig a pit for your friend. Now therefore be content, look upon me, for it is evident unto you if I lie, return, I pray you, let it not be iniquity, yea, return again, my righteousness is in it. Is there iniquity in my tongue? Cannot my taste discern perverse things? Chapter 7 Is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? Are not his days also like the days of an, of an hireling? As a servant earnestly desireth the shadow, and as an hireling looketh for the reward of his work, so am I made to pos uh, possess his months of vanity, and wherein some nights are appointed to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise and the night be gone? And I am full of tossings to and fro unto the dawning of the day. My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. Oh, remember that my life is wind, mine eye shall no more see good. The eye of him that hath seen me shall see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. As the cloud is consumed and vanished away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place 
know him any more. Therefore I will not reframe my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I a sea or a well that thou settest a watch over me? When I say my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall, e shall ease my complaint. Then thou scarest me with dreams, and terrifiest me through visions, so that my soul chooses strangling, and death rather than my life. I loathe it. I would not live alway. Let me alone, for my days are vanity. What is man that thou shouldest magnify him? and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him, and that thou shouldest visit him every morning and try him every moment. How long wilt, wilt thou not depart from me, nor let me alone till I swallow down my spittle? I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee, O thou pres uh, preserver of men? Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee, so that I am a burden to myself? And why dost thou not pardon my transgression, and take away my iniquity? For now shall I sleep in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. So yeah. A lot of uh, deep sayings in that. And I was just like, I have lived and still living through some of this depression. And it is a doozy to your life, to your, you know, to you emotionally. You know, going back to that other part, uh, you know, therefore I will not reframe my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. You know, verse 11 there. Ooh, 7-Eleven. Used to be, they still got, they still got their stores. Yeah, forget about that. But they were a lot more <laughs> abundant when I was younger. Yeah, I understand this part big time. You know, you got a lot of people in your life, they don't want you to talk about how bad you feel and this, that, and the other, and, you know, how you, how, if your life's turned bad on you, that, how it makes you feel, they don't want to hear it because, uh, you know, they, they don't want to be offended. But, yeah. But, uh, you know, so, and, and, you know, the one thing that's bothering Job here is he doesn't know what sin he's done. You know, he's asking, have I sinned? You know, is my, you know, <laughs> says, you know, and why dost thou not pardon my transgression? You know, <laughs> take away mine iniquity. You know, he doesn't know what he's done wrong to deserve this. And it's not been told him either. You know, some of us sit there and read the story and it's like, how could God do this to him? Like, isn't that, you know, not, to me, it's like it's quite mean. But we have to remember bad things come into our lives at times to make us stronger. It's hard for us to understand. But we have to remember that God says his ways are above our ways. And... Sometimes he needs to make us a stronger person emotionally and mentally because he's got something bigger planned for us and we need to be ready for it. You know, for, for, you, for you to be brought up, you know, for God to use you for more powerful things, you also have to be a powerful Christian to handle those things. But, you know, we never really know what God has in plan for us. Only thing we can do is what God wants us to do. And 
learn to have faith in him. But yeah, losing all that, then all of a sudden it's like, uh, for this, all this stuff to happen all at once, it's clearly something intentional. This isn't like, you know, an accident like, oh, well, my car got, you know, a tree fell in my car. Okay, and then that's it. You know, this guy lost his car. He lost buildings. He lost people, lost family, lost his livestock. Yes. <laughs> and then he lost his health all, all at the same time. It's like, like, this ain't natural. This ain't nowhere near natural. So he knows something's going on here, but he doesn't know what. But yeah, he's hoping his friends would comfort him and he's got his friend, a friend attacking him right now. So yeah, that's not a good thing. He, he feels abandoned by his friend and he pretty much just says, you know, just go away. If that's how you're going to be, just go ahead and go away. So you can come try to seek me tomorrow. And I'm, you know, and it's, 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 as I has it says that the morning at this says, uh, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. No. For his, uh, now I sleep in the dust. You know, he can't, can't even, he's not going into his home. Not sleeping in his bed or his couch. He's going to sleep in the dust because of the boils. Hey, anyway, that's the end of the lesson, though. So that's the end of uh, seven, chapter seven there. Wow, we're almost at 40 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson here. Yeah, I see. Uh, J Job is a book I haven't studied in quite some time. And to be honest, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually, I'm trying to remember the last time I did actually study the book of Job. Because I've been doing this, this uh, normally I read through the Bible, and but I'm dyslexic, so a lot of it I don't pick up on. So... I'm finding out that while I'm doing this Bible study this way and I'm following along, reading it out loud and doing all this other stuff in between, I'm actually getting a lot more. You know, I'm learning the Bible more myself at the same time while also teaching. Because most time, you know, when you sit there, the book of Job, most people say, well, Job had all this bad stuff happen and he stayed true to God. But a lot of people sit there and wait a minute. This is being true to God. He, he's in he's in depression. He's not happy, happy, joy, joy. He says, uh, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. I'll just have, I'll still uh, worship him. And he's still worshiping God. He hasn't left God and stuff. And Satan, that's what Satan trying to tell God that, you know, we'll do all this stuff to him. He'll walk away from you and curse you. And, you know, it's like me, I've, uh, I've said some cuss words this, that, and the other, and all the bad that's happened to me in the last few years of my life. A lot of things have actually my my, my problem's been progressing for like over twenty something years. It just it got really bad these last five. Last uh, actually almost almost ten yes almost ten years now. Good gracious, time's flying. These last ten years, things have changed dramatically for me, and it's gotten worse. And so I'm still serving God. I'm not walking away from God, but I haven't been a happy, happy, joy, joy Christian either. I've been fighting depression, fighting anger, and losing my temper, and saying words I shouldn't, and being all upset, and you know, yelling at God, why, 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 and stuff. And we always want an answer, but you know, sometimes we're not going to get an answer. We don't need an answer. It's in the scripture. But the thing is, Job never walks away from God regardless of all the bad that has happened to him. And I'm kind of hoping the same thing happens to me, you know, staying with God and everything else and not walking away and that, you know, at the end of this and, well, of course, at the end of this, I'm going to be more blessed in one way or the other. Because I'm going to be a stronger Christian for it. I'm going to be able to handle things better. I'm going to be able, anyone else coming up after me that's going to be in the same scenario, same situations and stuff, I'm going to be able to say, hey, 
I know what you're being. I know. I, I know what you're going through. Been there. You know, that's the people that can help you the most. Is people that's done, been there, done that, and and learned how to go past it. You know, to get better after it. But somebody that's never walked in the you know walked the same path that you have, they can't really help you. So. That's why a lot of times we go through bad things as Christians is so we can help others when bad things happen to them. But we can only help them whenever we get through the storm ourselves. That the saying goes, God will bring you to, you know, God will bring you to, uh, God will not stop you from going into a storm. He'll just help you through the storm. We're all going to go through storms in life. So. Mm. But yeah, anyways, I said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson here. So once again, remember to pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I pray for you all. Uh, if you like this and stuff, you know, uh, share it with others. It's, uh, if you know anybody out there that, you know, would like to learn God's word better. You know, if I'm, oh, but please do, if I do say anything wrong or whatever, or I got something wrong, you know, please leave in comments, let me know, because I'm not perfect. No one is, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of debates in some parts of scriptures and stuff, and... So if you're a little confused on the area, you don't really understand it or something, something I went through and you want some more definitions on it, you know, you can leave a comment about it or anything. Or if you think I got something wrong, leave it in the comments. You know, we can we can talk about it, debate it a little bit and, you know, go back and forth. Because as, as, as the, like I said before, iron sharpens iron. As a congregation, we're to help one another so we can all be better in helping others, you know, in spreading the message, spreading the word of God, and helping others deal with life as it comes at them. So, I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson here. Until next time, God bless, good night, and goodbye.